Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here today. I was digging through some stuff and I found this large tag and it's an oldie and I thought, well, let's try and make it into something new. So I grabbed a bunch of things. Here's the larger size of the tags. These are by Stampers Anonymous and I'll link them below and they're really heavy duty um, tag board almost like an MDF board. I'm going to rip all of this decoration off and get to the bottom and then we're going to cover those things with some of these products that I have on my desk. I have these um, chipboard things and I thought maybe I'd use one as a stencil. I have some pattern paper, some uh, cheesecloth, some cardboard scraps, I've got the rings for the the tag, and I got these really, really cool things. Believe it or not, these are um, things where you would save your coins, and I will um, link above here where I got this idea from. Um, I believe her name is Tracy Fox. Uh, I hope I got that right. And if I didn't, I apologize. But I will link it above. And this makes the coolest things to put um, like butterflies or any type of other elements in. When I saw her video, I thought it was absolutely amazing. And I had to do it. So I went ahead and ordered these um coin protectors on Amazon and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Here's some uh, words and, and some ephemera that I grabbed out of my stash. I wasn't sure what I was going to use but I just thought I would show you everything I had. Okay well let's get started. Here's also some pieces I thought I may use and I did not use any of this but there's always tomorrow right? I've got lots of things to create with so no worries um, it'll be coming in an upcoming video I am sure because now it has been dug out and it is on my desk so let's get started creating this tag okay I've got all of the background off and the tag was a little bit warped um, so I was deciding which um, side to use and I decided to go with the um, tag the side of the tag excuse me that w didn't have any of the paper on you're going to be looking at the front of it anyway so I didn't think that that was going to be a problem I'm using my matte medium and I am putting a really nice coat on there and of course I had too much and I'm going to cover it with this vintage music sheet and I'm giving it a really good stick down I'm using my brayer to make sure I don't have any air bubbles and then I'm going to go over the top with my matte medium and you'll see um, that I have a real good stick on here covering the whole tag and we will just use my uh, nail file to take those papers off. It's going to be real easy and I give it a little bit of a dry but it is still a bit wet so I am being careful with it. Alright everything is stuck down and it's looking good. Okay it's a little bit wet yet but I'm just pulling that off with my fingers and then I'm going to use my file and I like using this uh, I guess it's an emery board because it gets all of the bits off and it actually gives the edge a real nice texture um, you know kind of grunge grunges it up is that a word grungy grungy grunges it up okay so yeah that is a real nice technique and it smooths everything out looks real good and I'm just going to uh, get the hole there a little bit and then started some of the paper started uh, tearing and that is absolutely fine it's just going to add more texture to the piece 
grabbed out my Swiffer and cleaning off my desk. I am going to link this really nice craft mat that I have here also in the description below. It is real nice because you can heat on it. It doesn't melt. It protects your surface. And it's something that um, Sean Petit used all the time. And I thought that I would link it for you. People were asking what type of mat that was. So I'm digging in my stash and I'm grabbing out some sprays. And the sprays that I grabbed out were um, oxide sprays. I've got peeled paint, stormy sky, and vintage photo. Now you saw me put down a little bit of water on the tag and I'm spraying my sprays right on. Make sure you are wiping off your nozzles when you're spraying. Now I like this color combination a lot, adding a little bit more water and making it run. But when I dried it, it was just a little too chalky for me. And if you're familiar with Distress Oxide sprays, it does have that finish. Um, I love them when they're wet in this project, but I wanted something just a little more bold. And you can see here um, the technique. And I left that in the video for you because I wanted you to see how it dried. Um, I, I really love the oxide sprays and it's definitely a cool effect, but I wanted something a little bit more bold for this tag. So here I'm letting it drip and dry on my desk and here you can see it's dry, but it wasn't shiny enough for me. So I set those aside and I'm gonna try and go over the piece with some different sprays sprays and here is my swatches of my sprays and I do have a video on how I uh, swatched all of these and I'm picking out some different sprays and also when I was going through them I did see some really cool yellow and orange and those were acrylic sprays by Dina Wakeley so here let's try and go over the tag here and see if I can save it I have a damp towel there and I'm using uh, a blue by Seth Apter and the blue and the green are amazing here. The green is a Distress Spray Stain by Tim Holtz and it's that new color. I think it's um, Wilderness. The color is Rustic Wilderness. The blue by Seth Apter is a sea spray color. And then I do have a brown that I dug out. And I thought since I had all of this ink on my um, piece of parchment paper here, I was going to stain these pieces of cheesecloth. There's the brown that I chose, and that's a terracotta by Suniko, and it is a walnut ink. So that's a really cool color to get that brown. Here I'm using that yellow by Dina Wakeley, and um, I was going to use the orange also, but my bottle was clogged. And if anyone is interested, I will show a small video of how I unclog my sprays. Um, it, it is kind of a little science. And um, if you want that, comment below and let me know. And I will go ahead and share that information with you. I decided to use the yellow and I went ahead and sprayed all of that cheesecloth. Now there is a lot of ink on my uh, parchment paper there and I just thought I would go ahead and use that um, with the ink that I had and look how cool they all are dry and these pieces of cheesecloth are going into this project and of course many many more projects that we're going to have. Here is a stamp I use all the time and I um, thought I would try not to use it this time and I went with a stamp and this is by Wendy Vecchi and you can see how I mark the top of my stamp. 
it's a script stamp and I wanted just a little bit of script in the background so I thought I would use something different besides that French script that I use all the time and I liked it it turned out neat it gave it another layer of dimension to the um, tag that we're making here I got out my archival ink and um, that is what I used to stamp. Now I was going to spray through this piece of chipboard. It's, it's really a heavy duty chipboard, almost like a wooden stencil. And I chose uh, a different method. I'm going to use some, a makeup sponge and my black acrylic paint. And I'm going to apply that to the back of this piece of wood and I'm going to use it as a stamp. I have no idea if this is going to turn out or not, but one of my big sayings in life is uh, God hates a coward. So I am just going to go ahead and try this technique, see if it works. I'm not sure if all of this paint is soaking right into that piece of wood or not, but I thought I'm going to try it and see what happens the design of this piece of wood is really really cool so just showing you that you can use something like this that you may have in your stash two different ways i could have um, sprayed through it or like i did here i'm using it as a stamp i wanted to um, put this top portion so that it um, incorporated that whole of the tag up to the top and I think that this is working you know it doesn't have to be a perfect stencil um, or stamping image onto the background it's just there for um, some dimension and some more texture into your piece so I like how it turned out <coughs> excuse me um, and I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and as we let that dry, we're going to work on um, just some of my elements that I think I'm going to put on the um, project. And also, I'll show you how, to, how I did that butterfly in that coin uh, protector. I use my archive, no, I'm not archival, um, alcohol inks. And the color that I chose was let's see if I have it here um, the color that I chose I believe is ginger I will I am wrong on that I apologize the color that I chose was sandal okay so here we go I took a bit of that cheesecloth that I colored brown and it is dry of course I'm taking my alcohol ink and I am putting it in this plastic coin protector and I am just making sure it goes all over the plastic and I am uh, turning it around so it gets the edges doing it for the front and the back of the piece and then we're going to put that piece of cheesecloth in there but these have to be absolutely dry before we go ahead and do that so while we're waiting for things to dry, I'm going to cut out these um, butterflies and some of the bees. And here is how it looks when I set it all out. I even cut the letters of that word art out. So here's my um, coin keeper with the butterfly. I put everything down just to get a visual. And here I'm showing you how you can cut out the inside of that A without too much fuss. You just go ahead and go straight through the letter and then you can cut out the inside. I just thought it was kind of an interesting tip and I got that tip from Diane Reevely. She's really good at um, fussy cutting and that saves, saves a lot of time. So here I'm just showing you how I have it all set out on my desk and then I'm going to start putting stuff down with my matte gel. I put some water in this little bowl and 
Um, here I'm putting some black on that circle. That is for the hole at the top of the tag. And um, I want to ink all of these pieces with my Distress ink. And I just was wondering how I'm going to remember where everything is before I take it all apart. So my idea was to go ahead and take a picture with my phone and I'm taking a picture and then I sent it to my computer and I could have it on my computer right um, next to me. Um, sometimes when you have it on your phone it uh, goes blank. So I am looking at it on my computer and while I'm waiting for everything to dry I'm going around all of the pieces with my Distress ink. And then I thought, nope, I better not. I better go around it with my archival ink because we're going to add some matte medium to this and I didn't want all of that to smear. So remember you want to use a waterproof ink when you're going around things like this that you're going to put a medium over the top so it doesn't smear on you. So good tip. Um, and here I'm just adding a couple of slits to this paper and I'm curling it up so that it looks a little more vintage and grungy so that it's kind of like old um, paper that has been torn and I think that's a really fun technique. Adds a little bit more texture and depth to the piece and we're always trying to get more texture and depth, aren't we? Of course we are. So I even went around these scraps of cardboard because it just finishes the piece. I cut out these little tiny bees from that pattern paper and I'm going to go ahead and start placing things down. Now some of my ink from my underlayers was smearing a bit so I kind of had to be careful and slow my roll here so that I was being careful not to smear all the color on the tag and I am just gooping that matte gel um, on this um, cheesecloth to get it to settle down and stick to the piece being careful again not to smear all of that paint and you can do it it just takes time and I'll do a bunch of this off camera so that you can see I'm trying to keep my videos a little bit quicker for you so that you don't get bored with the obvious here so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I wanted to show you my new toy this is a cordless hot glue gun. So I'm trying it out for the first time. I will link it below and I want to say absolutely amazing. I am so happy with this. I actually um, thought about throwing my corded hot glue gun away but that would be wasteful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it down to the cottage and I'm going to leave it there in case of emergency when uh, the girls and I are crafting down there or if you know you need to fix something it is really really nice and I will link it below I highly recommend it and we're going to use it also on that butterfly but I used it for my main focal point there and it stuck it down perfectly I love it and you charge it with your computer so it has a USB port. It is really nice. And I want to say the price of it um, on Amazon was maybe $21, maybe $22. And again, I will link it below. Highly, highly recommend it. So I was happy with my new toy. Here I'm going over all of the um, piece with some more matte gel and everything needs to be set aside to dry here. So I'm gonna uh, move in so you can see what I'm doing with this butterfly piece. 
I am going to ink the edges with that brown uh, potting soil archival ink and I'm doing this so that it gives it that vintage look. We don't want it to be too stark white. And this is just a butterfly that I cut out from something that was in my stash. I think it came from a calendar. So I have that piece of brown uh, cheesecloth that I stained. And now I'm putting a little bit of that hot glue in there, being very careful not to burn my fingers and I'm going ahead and setting that butterfly in there. And I'm using my tweezers to lift up the butterfly wings and bend it and make it look um, like it's a little butterfly specimen in this plastic piece. Cutting off some of that cheesecloth so it doesn't stick outside of the piece, just adjusting it with my scissors there. and. This is just a really, really cool idea that I believe her name is Tracy Fox and I will link it like I said. Here I just dug out a little word from my, um, they're called, what are they called? Uh, Small Talk by Tim Holtz and they have different words and I just stuck the word art underneath the butterfly wing there to tie it all together and you did see me I inked the edges with that brown and isn't that the cutest little thing I'm gonna stick it right here to the side but before we do that we're going to do some shading we're gonna cut those jagged edges off and we're going to finish up this piece um, and I had a thought. Before I put that butterfly down, I'm going to um, put down my wash of burnt umber and water that I love to do. And um, my brown was calling me some more and I wanted to put that brown um, potting soil ink around the edge of the piece so that there wasn't... Um, so much raw edge there i wanted to have a more finished uh, border if you would on to the big tag and i'm just using a sponge dauber okay we're getting ready now for my water and burnt umber acrylic paint wash this is something that i do a lot with my mixed media and um, I really think that it pulls it all together. It gives that grunge. It gets the paint in all of the uh, nooks and crannies. And here I'm just using a plastic lid and some water and a soft brush. And I'm going ahead and I was going to mix it with my palette knife, but there's really no need. Just go ahead and use your brush. You get it to the consistency of maybe a thick watercolor, and that's what I like to do. I paint it all over the piece, and then we're going to spray it with more water, and we're going to let that brown paint run and get in all of those nooks and crannies, like I said, of that cheesecloth, of that cardboard that we have down, and it gives it such a great, great um, finished uh, dimension, I guess you could call it. And here I'm just lightening up that focal point tag in the middle with my damp cloth, just pulling a little bit of that brown off. And here I'm setting it aside on top of a um, jar of matte gel. Now you can see here I used, used excuse me some rust color embossing uh, powder from Wow and I didn't show you how to do that because I wasn't sure if it was going to turn out but it's super easy you the paint was still wet a little bit in places I poured on the rust color um, embossing powder and I heat it with my heat gun 
and it just added the coolest shimmer to parts of the tag. You would not believe it. Now I'm going around the focal point with my charcoal pencil and the piece was way too wet still. So I had to stop and uh, I let it sit overnight and now I'm coming back with my charcoal pencil and adding some shading around this focal piece. Also, I'm going to use my brown Stabilo pencil and some water. And I really like how that can get in the areas that your charcoal pencil cannot. So I'm just dipping it in my water and going around the piece that I'm using my brush and pulling out that brown um, Stabilo pencil with the water and it is the perfect way to go around this because there's a lot of texture there and um, it just kind of melts right in with that water. So I'll go ahead and I'll finish up all this shading. I'll come back and we'll do the finishing touches for you. I hope you liked this piece. It kind of took on a mind of its own, so I was really quite happy with it in the end. Um, I had no idea what I was doing when I started. I just wanted to make something for you, and I wanted to get back to my roots, my mixed media project. And um, this tag, in the end, turned out really, really neat. I will have great descriptions of products linked below for you. Please leave comments, concerns, and ideas if you have any for me, things I could have done different, things you want to see in the future, and I will definitely take all that into consideration. Now, I would love to have you um, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of these videos. I do um, card videos, I do art journaling, and then of course something like this, mixed media art, which is really fun. Everything is dry here and I'm just trying to decide what I'm going to use to put through that hole at the top. And this um, piece of leather cord it has kind of a button on there on the bottom and i thought maybe some raffia but i needed to set that aside and i'll do it off camera because i wanted to finish the edge and put that butterfly on for you first so i'm going around the edge with my um, gelato and it's a black and this big one is called a double scoop and there is a lot of product in this it's just creamy enough like the um, Distress Crayon that you can use. You can also use your charcoal pencil. I just wanted that black edge and it's a very, very nice finishing touch to this piece. It gives that brown that I already put on there just another layer of dimension. So we're going to put on that butterfly. I'm so excited about adding this to the piece. It just really, really finishes it. So here's my trusty hot glue gun again, this cordless hot glue gun. I absolutely love it. I can't tell you enough. You have to try it. If you're looking for a cordless glue gun, this is it. I absolutely hated getting my um, glue gun out all the time. So this is my fix. Look at how neat that worked. Stay tuned for the pictures. I'm going to show pictures of the finished product. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some great ideas and we will talk to you again on Thursday. Thanks so much.